Hello! Bit of a different video today because I want to talk about a project I want to get involved in. And it started um, a couple of weeks ago, I think, when I was just sort of scrolling through Facebook in what I describe as sort of zombie mode. You know, sort of thing, you're not really looking for anything, but somehow you've been caught up and you just keep scrolling. This is me doing a scroll wheel thing. You're just scrolling down and you're seeing, you know, rubbish, uh, various pieces, but for some reason you're sucked into watching it. I don't know why. But then I noticed a video that made me sit up and watch. And it was on, I think it was like a mini Talon group, an FPV group. And there was this video of somebody flying and seemed to show HD video. And I noticed it because the OSD was really, really sharp. Um, and obviously the, the video looked really nice as well. So I checked into it and subsequently found out it was using something called OpenHD, which I'd never heard of before. And of course I got very excited because I, I thought to myself, it says it's open. Is it some sort of open HD system, <laughs> as the name might suggest? So I thought I've got to check this out. Some sort of open uh, based uh, HD system for FPV sounds very, very exciting. But before we start jumping around and getting overly excited and saying, throw away your DJI goggles, proprietary stuff is out, open stuff is in, yay. It's very important to talk about what OpenHD is, at least what I think it is so far, and what it is not, which is more important. So the first thing to say is this is not a plug and play system. This is not a single unit you buy and you have some goggles, like in the DJI system. Um, it doesn't really compare there. It's more complicated to set up, I think it's fair to say. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but I'm just looking at the diagrams to see all the interdependencies between things, um, and that makes it not very easy. And it really isn't any sort of replacement for the DJI system, or the Sharp Byte if it ever comes out. Um, and this mainly comes down to the latency. What we're talking about with OpenHD right now is camera to your goggles or whatever in somewhere around 100 milliseconds, somewhere like 80 to 120, depending on the sort of camera you're using and the type of equipment you're using to send it and receive it. Now, this sort of latency is obviously way, way too slow for any sort of five inch quad you're gonna be hooning about the field with a couple of inches off the floor because you'll be into a bush or on the floor before you've noticed it in your goggles. Um, so whilst the fast five inches are out for now, we've still got things like fixed wing, where up high in cruising, that sort of latency doesn't matter. You've got your larger sort of cruising uh, GPS stabilized quads, for example. Basically, where it's not all about speed and going fast, close to obstacles, you're, you're in good stead. The reason why there's this latency is because this project uses what you might call uh, general purpose com computing tech. Right now, the suggestion is to use Raspberry Pis, both on the bit you'd put in the air and the bit on your ground station for receiving the pictures. Now, you can actually use these to send both the FPV signal, the two-way telemetry, and even the control signal via a USB-based Wi-Fi uh, antenna. But the video encoder in the Pi isn't optimized for low latency video encoding. It's made to produce smooth video and not consume too much power because it's a small device. Alternatively, the engineers over at DJI could design the best possible hardware which would yield the best possible performance. So video encoding very quickly on the air unit and decoding it very quickly on the goggles so the latency is much less. You'll also notice, if you take a look at that video, that the bitrate seems to be very low. It's averaging on this one about 5 megabits. Whilst DJI can do a whopping 50, very important for going fast and being able to see detail. Now, OpenHD could push the bitrate up and push more bits through, but it doesn't really see the point because it's got this high latency at the moment. It's like, why are we having a, a bigger bitrate, which obviously costs CPU power and stuff, and they'd prefer to sort of spend that CPU power somewhere else. At the moment, though, people seem fairly happy with this bitrate, uh, that's something that could change though. And despite the low bit, right, I have to say the results seem pretty nice. So you might be wondering why are you interested in OpenHD when you've clearly said it's not as good as the stuff out there at the moment, like the DJI goggles and the DJI FPV system. Well, I've got a few reasons really. I don't have anything against DJI. I was an early adopter of DJI. I had a, an F450 with a NASA. I've got a Mavic Air. I suppose you say one thing I had against them is they didn't actually send me an air unit and DJI goggles to review, but that's just sour grapes on my part. Putting that aside, what I don't want to see is any sort of monopoly in any part of the hobby. And I do see that DJI FPV systems getting so popular that it seems very hard for any other vendor to get a look in. Uh, Fat Sharks been talking about Sharp Bite for a while. They're really gonna have to get it out quickly if they're gonna make any sort of impact because everybody is going DJI. Everybody that I've talked to that's used it absolutely raves about it, like they've been converted into this weird cult. But if you've only got one big player, 
monopolizing this one system, then you've got no competition, you've got no innovation, you're just having to suck up what they're giving you without anybody else getting a look in. I don't think that's good. I think we should have lots of different products available. Um, and hopefully some sort of standardized system means that, you know, you can pick and choose bits and pieces from anywhere. Like, like you would when you built a quad, you wouldn't have to have a specific VTX or a specific flight controller or a specific ESC board. You can pick and choose as you want to. That's what I'd like to see in HD video. So the other reason I really wanted to check out OpenHD is that I really love it when a bunch of hobbyists get together, they see a problem and they come up with a solution. Now to start with, that solution's normally a bit doohickey. There's like, oh, we just have this, this and this and we'll plumb them together somehow and we'll make it work. Um, so often at the start of the project, it's a bit cumbersome, it's a bit messy and as pro progress continues, this is where things really start to come together and get optimized a lot better. But with it being open source, people can look at it, they can fork it off on GitHub and they can build their own repository so they can put their own features in, they can progress it in their own way and they can customize it and make it work on different platforms as well. It could be there's multiple different versions going on in the future doing all sorts of things. That's the beauty of it. To illustrate this, we only have to look back at the history of flight controllers um, from Multiwii that uh, forked off into base flight. Base flight went, then went to clean flight. Clean flight went to beta flight. Then there's offshoots like uh, iNav and EMU flight, and that carries on going all back from the one original Multiwii from yonks ago. And even already we're looking at different hardware platforms. As I said, this is running on Raspberry Pi for now, but there is something from NVIDIA, a similar sort of uh, all-in-one computing board called the Jetson Nano, which uh, is a lot faster. It has a 128 core GPU, and this makes it extremely quick at encoding video. So if you use that, um, and they're, they're sort of in testing stage at the moment, the latency glass to glass comes down to about 40 to 50 milliseconds, which is, Still not down to DJI, but obviously a lot closer. Now the developers tell me they could potentially use some sort of FGPA solution, and this would bring it down to DJI levels of latency. They haven't got to that yet. There's a lot of development going on, but that's something to look at. So this is a constantly developing system. It's fairly new. So I really wanted to put one of these together because I was excited by the fact that hobbyists had done it mainly, and I thought this, this looks fun to try it out, see what's happening. Um, also, I wanted to put this out as a sort of introduction just to make sure, you know, I don't get sidetracked by things. I'm doing this, I'm still doing reviews, I'm still doing development on the sim, I'm still doing normal life stuff, I'm just adding, you know, sleeps, I sleep when I'm dead. So uh, I'm putting this here, so if you don't see anything from me in a few weeks, please feel free to hassle me and say, where is your OpenHD video? This is uh, sort of to make sure I continue through the project and actually get stuff out there. So what I have done is bought some of the kit that I need to put the system together. And in my follow-up videos, what I'm hoping to do is show you exactly how I put that together and how I configure it. Now, to be fair, the devs have told me what they actually want to do is kind of slow down the amount of code and changes coming in because they want to have stability and they want to make it easier to set things up. Because right now, um, it does look a bit intimidating. If you look at sort of the picture of the system and how it goes together, there's no real start point. You kind of sort of jump in there and just do stuff. So this could become out of date, but I, d I don't care because I was excited to get in there and try it and see what it was like now and what we can do and how we basically how we fiddle about with it. So I had to spend out a fair bit of money, obviously not as much as DJI system still, to get it sorted out. And I really have to thank my patron supporters for this one because without them, projects like this where I have to spend money would not be possible. So I thank them all down here on the screen. Thanks guys, you are the rock stars. I couldn't do it without you. This is for you. Of course, if you want to be part of the Happy Patreon look, there's always a link down below where you can join up, hint, hint. Anyway, I'm gonna run through what I've bought so far and generally how it should go together. So in this box is a Raspberry Pi 4 for B, um, the two gigabyte version, which looks like this out of the box. And this is gonna be both the main ground Pi and potentially an air Pi as well. It's actually got inbuilt Wi-Fi, but we're not gonna be using that. We're gonna be using a more powerful external Wi-Fi card. In here is a Pi Zero. I think this one's called the Pi Zero WH. The Pi Zero is a little, very cheap, tiny board. And I wanted to get it because I thought this is a lot smaller than the main board and it would go on something very small. It's not as powerful um, and that means that the Pi Zero is already maxed out in sort of its current running, so there won't be many enhancements going there. But I, I thought I could try that to see how that worked against the, the main Pi 4, uh, just because I wanted a lightweight one as well to, to try there. 
Then got a couple of these. These are called the Pi Zero Cam, and these ones feature what they call a fisheye lens. I had a look at the lens. The, the normal one seemed a bit narrow for normal FPV. So the fisheye looked sort of more like a regular FPV lens and looks like this. The important thing about this one is it connects directly to the Pi via a, a special camera connection so you don't have any extra latency trying to do stuff. Other people have used things like GoPros and HDMI out going to an HDMI board but that adds a bit of latency and I thought these, these are quite nice to try to start with. And because these are actually built for the Pi Zero, this is a little adapter thing I've got so I can use it in the Pi 4 as well if I want to. A couple of questions over the quality of the sensors and the lenses in the Pi cameras. Uh, and that's possibly why other people are using the uh, HDMI stuff. But this is kind of all a bit more plug and play and a bit more simple. So I thought, here's my starting point. I can always go out and experiment with other stuff after. So on the ground side of things, you kind of need a screen. So I've got this. This is sort of the official Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen display. I think um, it can actually use a touchscreen on the ground if you want to. Uh, pretty much this is just so I could help set things up. Now this isn't uh, full HD. I think this is something like 800 by 400 or something. Uh, in here is just a case for it to go in. But the good thing about the Pi is what it's got here is two micro HDMI ports which it can drive both of up to 4K. So what you can do, you can have one plugged in the ground station so you can generally see what's happening. Another one you can always plug in some full HD goggles or something like that. Um, it should also be able to record it, which I presume it does in the resolution it's coming. Don't know, find out, that sort of stuff. I could, I could have got a higher resolution screen, but I wanted it kind of small and portable. You didn't want, you know, dragging around a big sort of 10 inch screen and stuff. And now I've got two of these. This is the um, Asus, Asus AC56, which are pretty meaty Wi-Fi cards. They're pretty big as well compared to the Pi and of course lots of people strip these out. They don't use USB, they solder direct on. But these will put out 500 megabits. Um, so people are getting, you know, up to 10 kilometers range with this and people are using multiple cards like this in order to have diversity on their ground station. Now you can get cheaper alternatives on places like AliExpress but I didn't want to wait for the very long sh shipping times and I also, I wanted something that I knew would work pretty much again out of the box. This isn't out of the box solution but I'm trying to get the bits that make it work easier altogether. Again I can always look at different cards once, I've, once I'm happy I've got it working got something that I can compare to see how they work. Obviously you're going to need a bunch of SD cards to put on the devices to actually run the software. So one important thing to know is that the actual Pi itself does not fly the plane. That is back in your hands or your Autopilot. Now in the video you saw you would probably recognize some stuff like fly-by-wire or cruise looked very much like Ardu Pilot if you'd ever seen that and that's exactly what's happening. What we're getting on the AirPi is telemetry on that case from Ardu Pilot so we're getting the Mavlink data that's being sent back to the ground Pi and that's displaying the, the OSD and all the information that it's getting from the telemetry from the, the AirPi. So you'd still need some sort of flight controller. So you're not restricted on using Ardu Pilot. You can also use things like Betaflight, iNav, uh, something called Vector Telemetry if you've got a vector. Basically, OpenHD on the AirPi reads that telemetry, sends it back to the ground station, the ground station arranges it into an OSD and tells you stuff. Is that OSD changeable and you can do things with it? Don't know yet, haven't checked that out. Be interested to find out. And as I said, you can use that Wi-Fi connection to send your controls up to your plane or whatever. And this is via plugging in like, something like a Tyrannis via the joystick connector. Now, I don't know if this is restricted to Arduino Pilot because it's got this Mavlink pass-through to pass controls up. I'll have to find out once I get there. So my plan for the upcoming videos is to first get this thing set up and working just on the bench here. Make sure I can like wander around the house and I'm getting um, a good signal back to my TV or, or my monitor here. Once I get that working, I like to try it on a ground vehicle just to see what happens with the range because it, being on the ground is much harder than being in the air and see how that works out, see if I encounter any issues and problems I need to look at. And if all that's going well, that's when we go in the air. So I've got a, a sort of large F450 quad. At the moment, it's in between flight controllers having just tried Arduino Pilot 
on an F4 board and failing. But that's one thing to do. Of course, I've got some fixed wing stuff. You'll see them around here on the wall that I can uh, check out as well. It's no really good planning what's gonna happen in sort of stage three yet. It's kind of like planning your first marathon before you've learned to walk. But that's it, that's my plan. That's Open HD and what I know about it so far. So I hope you join me for the upcoming videos and start hassling me if you don't see one in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, hope that's been helpful. I uh, hope you're interested in that project and I'll catch you later. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.